Hello and welcome to another episode of Beaker Bin Science. If I ask you, after putting the reaction, if you wanted to know whether your reaction has been completed or not, one thing that we all do to analyze whether the reaction has been completed or not is TLC confirmation, that is thin layer chromatography confirmation. And how we do it? We just put the spot on the TLC plate and run it on the mobile face and then check whether there is a spot formation which is different from your starting material or not. But this all done for those compounds which are having a UV activity. What if your compound is not UV active? What if your compound is aliphatic compounds? Then how you are going to analyze your compound whether it is completed or not? Then we have to use a specialized kind of a staining agents that will help to analyze your TLC and to analyze a non-UV active spots. You are going to learn all about the staining agents, which staining agent is used for which functional group, all these things in this video. And also you will find the recipes to make these staining agents all in this video. So I request you all to watch this video till the end. And also if you are new to this channel, please subscribe my channel. Thin layer chromatography TLC, is an affinity based method used to separate compounds in a mixture. TLC is a highly versatile separation method that is widely used for both qualitative and quantitative sample analysis. Suppose we have kept the chemical reaction and after keeping it for some time, now you want to check whether the reaction is completed or not. Then the first and the most effective method that you can use to check the completion of your reaction is TLC chromatography. This is the primary yet most effective method. In TLC, the stationary phase is a thin absorbent material layer, usually silica gel or aluminum oxide, coated on an inert plate surface, typically glass, plastic or aluminum. The sample is spotted onto one end of the TLC plate and placed vertically into the closed chamber with an organic solvent, mobile phase. The mobile phase travels up to the plate by capillary force and sample components migrate varying distance based on their different affinity for the stationary and the mobile phase. When the solvent reaches the top of the plate, the plate is removed from the developing chamber and dried. The separated component appears as a spot on the plate and the retention factor of each component is assessed. Now in general, we put minimum 4 spots if you have only 2 organic starting materials for your reaction. Let's understand this by an example. Suppose we are putting this reaction. In this example, there are 2 starting materials, SM1 and SM2 and the product is forming after 16 hours. Now in TLC, you will put 1 spot for SM1, 1 for SM2, 1 for reaction mixture after 16 hours and 1 for CO which contains all SM1, SM2 and reaction mixture. And now when you run the TLC in some mobile phase, for example 50% uh, ethyl acetate in hexane, we will see that these spots SM1 and SM2 will come at different level in TLC. And if you see some new spots which is different from the level of SM1 and SM2, which means some new spot or product is forming in the reaction mixture spot. If in reaction mixture nothing can be seen at the level SM1 and SM2, that means your starting material is completely consumed and your reaction is over. If your starting material or your product is not UV active, then you can't see them under UV chamber and hence you can't use this technique. Now to deal with this situation, the staining agents come into picture. But before learning about staining agents, let's learn about UV active and inactive molecules. To be UV active, compound must possess a certain degree of conjugation, which occurs most commonly in aromatic compound. If your compound doesn't have certain level of double bond conjugation, then they are UV inactive. Let's understand this with one more example. Here you can see nothing, neither SM1 nor SM2 or product are UV active. To check the TLC for such molecules, we need to use certain types of staining agents. Let's learn about them one by one. Iodine, 
the staining of the TLC plates with iodine vapor is amongst the oldest method for the visualizing of organic compound. It is based upon the observation that iodine has a high affinity for both unsaturated and aromatic compounds. Just take your TLC which is already spotted by the starting material and reaction mixture and also being run in the mobile phase dip that TLC in the iodine powder. If you know that your product is having an unsaturated double bond or if your product is having a one or more benzene ring then after dipping it in iodine it will give a brown spot. A chamber may be assembled as follows. To a 100 ml wide mouth jar with cap is added a piece of filter paper and a few crystals of iodine. Iodine has a high vapor pressure for a solid and the chamber will rapidly become saturated with iodine vapor. Insert your TLC plate and allow it to remain within the chamber until it develops a light brown color. Commonly if your compound has an affinity for iodine, it will appear as a dark brown spot on the light brown background. Moving on to the another important staining agent that is ninhydrin. It is excellent for detecting amino acids and amine group. If your product is having amine or amino acid group, then dip your TLC in ninhydrin. How to prepare ninhydrin? Just simple dissolve 1.5 gram ninhydrin compound in 100 ml of n-butanol and then add 3 ml acetic acid. Shake it well, that's it. Now, if your product is having aldehydes and ketone group present, then we can use DNP, dinitrophenylhydrazine, developed mainly for aldehyde and ketones. They react with aldehydes and ketones and form corresponding hydrazones, which are usually yellow to orange color. Recipe to make DNP stain. Dissolve 12 gram of 2,4 dinitrohydrazine, 60 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid and 80 ml of water in 200 ml of 95% ethanol. Another staining agent that is most widely used for detecting alkenes, alkynes, alcohol, amine, sulfides and any other group that can be oxidized is KMnO4 staining agent. Potassium permanganate KMnO4 This particular stain is excellent for functional group which are sensitive to oxidation. Immerse your TLC into this stain and the spot will appear as a bright yellow spot on the bright purple background. However, it will be necessary to gently heat the TLC plate to visualize the spot. Recipe to make this potassium permanganate stain. Dissolve 1.5 gram of KMnO4, 10 gram of K2CO3 and 1.25 ml of 10% sodium hydroxide in 200 ml water. A typical lifetime for this stain is approximately 3 months. Now last but not the least the most useful staining agent PMA Phosphomolybdenic Acid Phosphomolybdenic Acid stain is a good universal stain which is fairly sensitive to low concentration solution. It will stain most functional group however it does not distinguish between different functional group based upon the coloration of the spot on the TLC plate. Most often TLCs treated with this stain will appear as a light green color while compound of interest will appear as much more dark green spot. It is necessary to heat TLC plate treated with this solution in order to activate the stain for visualizing. The shelf life of the solutions are typically long so you can keep it for a longer time. Recipe for making PMS stain. Dissolve 10 gram of Phosphomolybdenic acid in 100 ml of absolute ethanol. So, if you are in doubt which staining agent you should use, then best thing is to stain it with the PMA. Thank you for watching this video till the end.
Keep supporting your favorite channel Beacon Wind Science and I'll promise you I'll bring more content like this in future. If you like this video, please hit the like button, comment which next video you want to see on this channel and do subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.